sing a prayer over today's times and offerings. Holy and wonderful Lord, we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Jesus, just for who you are, Lord God. You are our provider, and we give back to you and you alone today through our tithes and offerings. We just ask you to bless today's tithes and offerings. Help it to continue to be used for your kingdom work to be able to teach and preach the holy and blessed word of God. God. We're praying that people come in to hear your word. Lord. Yes, Lord. We just ask you to bless each and every one here today, Lord God. And those watching, we just love you, Lord. We ask everything in your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are in the hands of the usher. My God.
because uh, you know, I know I might be the only one, but I know some preachers that's not trying to do the right thing. Hallelujah. And so I say he's the greatest preacher. Amen. And I thank God for him. Right now he's in the hospital room. We went in on last night. We're praying for him as well. Amen. So we thank God for all of our fathers. Put your hands together one more time. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Turn with me to the Old Testament book of Ruth. Ruth. Chapter 2. chapter 2 verse 5 and it reads then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers whose damsel is this the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said it is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab she said I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves so she came and had continued even from the morning until now uh, that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boab unto Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter. Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide ye here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap. Go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And, thou, and when thou art athirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have thrown. And then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Boaz answered and said unto her, it hath been fully shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law uh, since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and I'll come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art now come to trust. Then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thy handmaiden, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Boaz said unto her, at mealtime, come thou hither and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers and reached uh, her parched corn, and she did eat and was sufficed and left. And when she was risen, to, risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let also some fall of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify you. Now, oh God, we thank you for this, your word, and we thank you for these, your people. We pray, oh God, that you would just speak to us today out of the riches and the abundance of your word. We pray that we decrease and that you might increase, that you might be glorified. For each and everything that we do, speak to us now. Holy Spirit, as only you can. 
have your way in this place. Surely we don't know every situation and we don't know every circumstance. We don't know the tests. We don't know the trials. We don't know the conditions that your people are enduring on this morning. But you know all things. We pray that you would meet the needs of your people. Pour into us. Strengthen us. Undergird us. Fortify us. Help us. Heal us. Deliver us. Make a way where there seems to be no way. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We love you. We ask these things of you in your precious, wonderful, and matchless name. Speak, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Still in the receive and recover series. This week's message is number 21 in the series. This week we're going to deal with the subject receive love. Receive love. Webster defines the word love as a strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. Affection based on admiration, benevolence, or common interest. He says it is to hold dear, to cherish. Webster says that love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another such as the fatherly concern of God for humankind. This is Webster. And also brotherly concern for others. Webster says that another definition of love is a person's adoration of God. It's not from Biden's Bible Dictionary, but that's from Webster's. But love is not just about affection, admiration, and adoration. Love is an action word. Love motivates us to move or to do something. Love without action is not love. It's just emotion. Love will drive you to protect. It will drive you to provide. Love will drive you to nurture. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. That's what love is and what love does. Hallelujah. And so we have to receive love. And I know that some are saying, well, I I don't have to receive love because um, I'm already all about love. Some are saying, I love doing things for others. I love showing affection. I love expressing my love for others in word and in deed. And those things are good and essential, and God requires us to do those things. But let me point out that what you're talking about is giving or showing love. It's one thing to show love, but it's another thing to receive love. You see, it's difficult for some to receive the action of love sometimes. For some of us, it's easy to show love to others, but it's not always easy to receive love from others. 
It's not always easy when someone comes out of the blue and just tells you that they love you. It's not always easy when someone gives you flowers or a gift card or places a little money in your hand. It's not always easy to receive it. It's not always easy when someone comes over and, and cuts your grass or, or cooks for you or does the cleaning just to show you that they love you. Sometimes it's hard for us to receive love. Some are saying, well, it's easy for me to receive those things. Uh, and generally speaking, most folks who love to receive are not the same folks who love to give. Some folks just love getting everything, but they don't understand that sometimes you have to give. In fact, the Lord lets us know that it is better for us to give than to receive. You see, some of us are natural givers uh, and when you're a natural giver, sometimes you have to learn how to receive. God wants us to have a two-way type of love. He wants us to be able to give love, but he also wants us to be able to receive it from others. God wants us to be able to receive it when other folks shower us with affection. He wants us to be able to receive it when others do things for us. Some of us struggle because we don't like to be the center of attention. We don't like to receive but God wants you to know this morning that you have to receive it when others show you love. That's why it's important for us to be able to receive love. Now, here in our text, we're, we're dealing with um, Sister Ruth. Now, Ruth has a, a very interesting story uh, because Ruth is not from Judah. She is not uh, from God's people, if you will. The Bible lets us know that, that Ruth had a mother-in-law um, by the name of Naomi. Naomi uh, was from Judah. The Bible lets us know that at the time, Naomi was married and she had two sons. The Bible lets us know that there was a great famine in the land of Judah. And because of the famine, Naomi, her husband, and her two sons went to find refuge in a country called Moab. And while Naomi, her husband, and her sons were in Moab, the Bible lets us know that Naomi's uh, sons married two daughters of the children of Moab. Those daughters then are a woman named Orpah and a woman named Ruth. The Bible lets us know that while they're there uh, in Moab, man, they, they, they find refuge and, and they find a source of food and nourishment for the young family. And the family, amen, begins to get stronger and tighter together. But over the process of time, the Bible lets us know that Naomi's husband dies and her two sons die as well there in the country of Moab. The Bible lets us know that it is now Naomi and her two daughters-in-law. Naomi hears word that back home in Judah, the famine has been relieved, if you will. Naomi says, I'm going to go back home to my people because I can find a place of refuge there. The Bible lets us know that the three women start on their journey back to the place called Judah. Well, while they're traveling on their way, Naomi stops and she has a change of mind, if you will, concerning her daughters-in-law. And she says, young ladies, you don't need to follow me back home right now. And she says, you're very beautiful young women and you're still young. 
In other words, you're still of the age to where you can go back home to Moab and you'll be able to find another husband. You'll be able to have some children and great success in life. Amen. She tells her daughters-in-law that you need to go back to Moab so that you can prosper. The Bible lets us know that both women initially fight against, amen, the wishes of Naomi. They both said, we're not going to leave you, but we're going to stay here with you. The Bible lets us know that Naomi is able to convince one of her young daughters-in-law, amen, to go back home and return to her people. But the Bible says that it is Ruth who stands firm in her belief that she cannot leave Naomi alone. Understand that at that time when a person was a widow woman, and specifically if you're a widow woman of age, amen, it almost automatically dooms you to a life of poverty because there's no male figure there who can provide for you. And so now what Ruth is saying is that I'm going to stay with you so that I can help you through these tough times. The Bible says that Ruth speaks to her mother-in-law. She says, wherever you go, I will go. She says, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. I want you to understand what Ruth is saying now. She said, I'm willing, amen, to leave everything that Moab has for me. She said, I've grown up there all my life. Don't know nothing but the false gods that were in that place. She said, I don't know anything but the streets of Moab. But mother-in-law, you've been so kind and so loving to me. And I can see the favor of God in your life. She said, I'm willing to drop everything that I have to follow you. Amen. To the place where I believe the true living God dwells. Amen. That woman says, I'm going to serve your God. I'm going to go into your country, if you will. Understand that this woman, Ruth, amen, was completely and totally devoted to taking care of her mother-in-law. The Bible lets us know that when they get into Judah, amen, she starts working instantly. Amen, she could have left Naomi in a place to where she was poor, alone, and destitute. But instead, she says, I'm going to work my feet to the bone because I want to show you some love. The Bible lets us know that one day, amen, Ruth goes into the field of a man by the name of Boaz. The Bible says that Boaz was a very wealthy man. He had some substance. He had, amen, some security. Amen, he had some fame and his name was known throughout the land. The Bible lets us know that this young girl Ruth goes into the field of Boab. The Bible said that she begins to glean, which means, amen, after the harvesters have collected all the corn and all the wheat and the barley, whatever is left over on the ground, if you will, picture it in your mind. You have Ruth there picking up the pieces that are left over from the laborers in the field. They said if you can pick up the pieces, whatever is left over, you can have. The Bible lets us know that then Boaz steps onto the scene and he looks over a man at a root and he says, whose damsel is this? In other words, who is this young woman over here and who does she belong to? And they tell him her story. Well, that's just the motorbike woman. Amen. She's the woman that came over with your relative Naomi out of Moab. She's here taking care of your family. She's here working her fingers to the bone. She's been here all day long collecting of what's left over so she can provide some food food for her mother-in-law to eat. The Bible says that Boab now steps to Ruth and he says, listen to me, young lady, just for a second. He says, I want you to stay here in my field and my field only. He said, I don't want you to go into another man's field. He said, I want you to hook up with my maidens and wherever they go, I want you to follow them. And those men that are in the field, once I send the word, they won't touch you at all. In other 
the words this man is saying. Hey man, if you're in my field, I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna keep you. Doesn't sound anything like God. When you're laboring in the vineyard of God, God will protect you and God will keep you. The Bible says, and Paul speaks, hey amen, to that young girl Ruth, and it lets her know, hey amen, that nobody will bother her. And if she gets thirsty, he says, go over, hey amen, to the water that the men have, and you can drink from that water. The Bible says that Ruth falls on her face, and she says to Boaz, why have I found grace in thine eyes? Oh, God, does this sound a little bit like us? When God has given us favor, shouldn't we just fall on our face? And say, God, I'm not worthy. And God, I'm not worthy of the honor that you're bestowing upon me. Amen. Ruth says to Boaz, how do you even know who I am? I'm just a stranger in this land. And Boaz lets her know that he's heard about what she's doing for Naomi. He said, I heard that you left your country, and I heard that you left your people to show love unto my relative. I've heard that you've given up everything so that you can show Naomi nothing but love. Understand that Boaz in turns to this woman. He says, at mealtime, make sure that you get plenty of food. And the Bible says that she ate to the full. And when she gets ready to go back into the field to start gleaning again, check out what Boaz does. He calls the fellas over. He said, don't touch her. Leave her alone. In fact, while you're collecting barley for me, he says, drop some extra pieces on the ground so that she can get them and come touch her, but leave her alone. I want you to see that every now and then God will have folks to drop some extra pieces on the ground so that you can pick them up. Understand that when you have the favor of God, God will bless you in a way that you can't even comprehend or understand. The Bible lets us know that at the end of Some 
folks have been abused and neglected. Amen. Some folks have never really been loved. Amen. Some have been abandoned by their parents. Amen. Some have been mistreated by family and your friends. Some have been hurt. Amen. By the ones who should love them the most. Amen. Some have never been on the receiving end of love. So it's difficult for you to receive love. Amen. Every time someone gets close to you, you pull away. Every time someone shows you some affection, you find a way to reject them. Every time someone does something for you, you struggle trying to receive it. Every time somebody tries to tell you the truth, amen, you get angry and you don't receive it. Your answer to kindness is hostility. Your answer to peace is turmoil. Your answer to concern is apathy. Your answer to love is sometimes hate. But you got to be able to receive love. Amen. Sometimes others are trying to show you love and you don't even see it. You have to see it and you have to receive it. You've got to be able to receive love in every area of your life. you got to be able to receive love in your home. Husbands, when your wives cook you dinner, you need to receive it as love. Wives, when your husbands cut the grass, you got to be able to receive it as love. Amen. Parents, when your children come to you seeking out your advice, you got to be able to receive it and love and children when your parents correct you you have to be able to receive it has love you got to be able to receive love in your home you should be able to receive love with your family and your friends when they tell you that that outfit ain't working for you they're not trying to make fun of you they're simply trying to show you some love when they tell you that that man or that woman is no good for you. They're not trying to point the finger. They're just trying to show you some love when they try to provide the instruction and the guidance that you need. They're trying to show you some love. You got to be able to receive love with your family and your friends. Amen. Some folks struggle to receive love in the house of God. Amen. The pastor is preaching and the pastor is teaching. They're counseling. They're leading. They're guiding. The saints are evangelizing. They're edifying, educating, and empowering. Every now and then, somebody comes to you and they give you a Holy Ghost handshake. If you will, place a little something in your hand. They're trying to show you love. Every now and then, somebody comes with a word of encouragement. They'll tell you that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Don't walk away from them. They're trying to show you love. They're trying to place you in a place where you can receive the love of God. But some folks even struggle receiving love from God. They don't believe that God loves them. They don't believe that Jesus cares. Amen. The devil has told you that you are a nobody. The devil told you you're a loser. He told you you'll never make it. He told you nobody loves you and nobody cares. Well, I came to let you know that the devil is a liar. He's the father of all lies. You need to know and understand that the whole reason Jesus came was to give you and show you some love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Understand that the reason God came here was to show you some love. The reason that Jesus endured what he endured was to show 
show you how much he loves you and to show you how much he cares. Understand, God's people, you need to know what Jesus was doing and put your face in the place. Understand, on Calvary, Jesus, he did what he did and he did it for you. Every time that they beat him, it was because he loved you. Every time they spit on him, he took it because he loved you. When they crowned him with thorns, he did it because of his love for you. Every time they hammered those nails in his hands, he took that pain on Calvary's cross because of his love for you. When they hung him up high and they stretched him out wide, he did it because he loves you. When they pierced him in his side and blood and water came streaming down, he allowed it because he loves you. When he gave him the goose and he died on that cross, he did it just because he loves you. When he placed him in the tomb, he endured because he loves you. And three came later, I said three came later, he was a king with all power in his hands. He did because of the love of God. Don't let somebody tell you you're a nobody. Don't let anybody make you believe you're worthless. Don't let anybody talk you in to believe in you're not loved. Don't God, he loved you so much that he paid the ultimate sacrifice so that you might be saved. Understand what I'm saying. God is at the door trying to show you some love. He's knocking at the door. You just have to receive it. Allow Jesus to embrace you. Allow Jesus to hug you. Allow Jesus to comfort you. Allow Jesus to show you the love that he has for you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. He loves you like you are his own son. His own mother if you will. Lord, help us to be able to receive your love. Help us to receive your comfort to receive your counsel, to receive your leading, to receive your instruction, receive your guidance, receive your protection, receive your correction. Lord, help us to receive the provision of God. Lord, help us to receive your love. No longer will I reject you. Will I ignore you? No longer will I refuse to accept your love. But now I'm ready. Now I'm willing and now I'm able to receive your love. I'm ready to be what you call me to be. Man, but I see me for who I am.
to receive love. Sounds easy. But it's not always easy. Ruth was a natural gift. That's why she wouldn't quit. Her sister-in-law, Orpah, initially took the same, same stance that Ruth took. Naomi said, girls, go back to Moab. You guys are young, beautiful women. Find you one of those nice, young, handsome millionaires in Moab. Have some children. Raise a family. Don't worry about me. I'm just an old, tired widow. Don't have many years left. At first, Orpah said the same thing that Ruth said. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not going to abandon you. Understand that that woman was a good woman too. But when pressed, she turned around and went back because that was her nature. She said, You know what? Naomi's right. I'm young, kind of beautiful. I may have an opportunity to have some success. And she went home. Ruth couldn't go back. Because that's not how she was built. Understand this, y'all. Because Naomi was not Ruth's mom. Ruth's mama, as far as we know, was still in Moab. I don't know if y'all catching this. But Ruth was able to love beyond what she was expected to do. It's one thing to take care of your mom. It's another thing to take care of your mother-in-law. Can I tell the truth? Some of y'all can't even speak to your mother-in-law. Some of y'all can't stand. Some of y'all got monsters in law. supposed to love Naomi like she did. But I believe something inside of Ruth said Naomi needs me. She was a giver of love. And when you truly become a giver of love, God allows you to become a receiver of love as well. Naomi was from Judah, which means Naomi was always one of God's children. Catch this now. Ruth was from Moab. Not God's child, but she was one who was willing to take care and show love to God's child. When folks are willing to show love to God's people, God honors them. I 
launch our business. Because we always talk about growth. And really, the focal point of the message is about growth. I want you to catch this little nugget. Because when they were traveling back into Judah, it was Naomi who tried to send the girls back. You follow what I'm saying? The girls were trying to show her love. But initially, Naomi was the one who rejected their love. It was only when Ruth was so persistent and so dogmatic and so unwilling to leave that Naomi finally broke down and allowed her to stay. What am I saying? I'm saying Naomi also struggled with receiving love. Sometimes we're just like Naomi. And sometimes we're just like Ruth. We want to give love, and it's a wonderful thing. But we have to be able to also receive. I'm telling you because I know. Be honest with you, it's something that I struggle with. I don't mind serving God, serving God's people, doing whatever I can. But sometimes it's difficult for me. What folks try to do for me, I'll be honest. I'm good. I got it. Don't worry about it. Trying to do 50 million things. Remember, um, several years back, you know, we had these church anniversaries every year. And we don't have pastors' appreciation services. Why? Because that's not me. It's hard for me to receive. And a few years back, Sister Howard and Deacon Ron Coley came to me and said, Pastor, you know, this, I don't know what year it was, but it was a certain year. We want to do something for you. And I'm like, no, I'm not good, you know. And, and, and they pretty much beat me down. <laughs> and finally I said, okay, you know. And then the next year they came to me, well, they tricked me, y'all. Like the serpent, they just got it around. They said, well, you, look, you allowed it last year. So why not? All right. Okay. And then the year after that, I got wise. We're going to honor Mother Freeman. And then the next year, we're going to honor the musicians. Why? Right. Because it's hard for us. This year, a brother came on to bless me financially. And I struggled with it. Oh, you know, I don't, you know, and then he finally just kept on me, like Ruth kept on, lay on me. And I would say, what am I saying? We all struggle, but we have to be willing. You see, it's like this. When you don't receive love, you're preventing somebody else from showing. Y'all catch that? So even though it's hard for us sometimes to receive it, y'all see Sister Howard writing that down. I know she's going to use those words against me next year. <laughs> As the using on Father's Day 2021, we have to be able to allow folks to show love to us. And I can tell you, there's many in the congregation right now, you sitting there, 
And some of y'all don't know, and some of you do. Some of you know you struggle. And I can call you by name, but I'm not gonna do it. When you first heard this message, you thought it was really a message about showing love. But the message is really about allowing others to show you love. That's what Jesus wants to do for each and every one of us. He wants to show us love. And understand this, that oftentimes Jesus shows you his love through others. You follow what I'm saying? Sometimes these folks are trying to show you love. And it's because God is motivating them to do it. He's calling them. He's dragging them. He's pushing them. He's motivating them to do what they're doing. And if you reject them, you're preventing them from being obedient to God. I know you don't like it, and I know sometimes it don't feel right. But you have to allow yourself to be loved. Some of you are such good, kind, and loving people that it's easy for you to show love to others. And you almost feel guilty when somebody tries to show you love back. You got to get the victory over that. And it don't seem like it's something that you have to get the victory over. It seems like it's something that, you know, I took this thing, I didn't receive it because it's not about that. But sometimes you got to look past it. You got to receive what the Lord is trying to bless you with. Some of you are not huggers. You're not affectionate. I don't know me. I'm standing at the back of the church every Sunday trying to get everybody a hug. Those who want to kiss you, get one of those too. I'm trying to show love. But I wasn't always like that. God had to do something to me. Where I'm from, there wasn't no showing a whole lot of love. I'll tell this quick story. I'm going to tell on myself. When I was in the military, coming straight out of Chicago, the boot camp and all that, and I went to Memphis. I flew into Memphis, Tennessee, southern um, city. And I had my uniform on, and I remember being at the airport and people were greeting me. Hello, how are you? Hey, how's it going? And I, I got Chicago mentality. And Marine Corps, I'm like, what in the world? These people talking to me for. I'm literally checking my wallet. Because back home when somebody speaks to you, somebody else coming behind you. Pick your pocket. They say, hey, how's it going? I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> literally. That's what my mind was. And then I was walking through the airport and it hit me. Oh, this is Southern hospitality. That's what they talking about. What am I saying? It was hard for me to just receive greetings from folks. Because of where I was from. What I had endured. And now, you see, you never know because I'm trying to, oh, somebody walking out the door, jumping over pews, trying to get folks up. God changed me, and he's still working on me. We all have to get to the place to where we can receive love. Write these five things down, and i got to move because I'm already past time. How do I receive love? Number one, 
How do I receive love? Number one, accept salvation. You gotta accept salvation. St. John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How do I receive love? You gotta accept salvation. God loves us so much that he died for our sins. But God does not force us to love him back. He gives us the opportunity. So accepting salvation, which means what? Repenting of your sins, being baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. When you do that, you are accepting and receiving the love of God that he and the blood that he shed for us on Calvary's cross. If you want to receive the love of God, get saved and stay saved. Number two, how do I receive love? The second thing, you must be willing to love God back. You must be willing to love God back. Two scriptures. First John chapter 4, 19, and then St. John chapter 14, verse 15. That was 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. And then St. John chapter 14, verse 15. First John says, we love him because he first loved us. St. John says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You want to receive love Hallelujah. from God. You got to be willing to love God back. It's not enough to know that God loves us. We got to be able to love him back. It shouldn't be a one-sided type of love. Only God towards us, but not us towards God. Remember that love is an action word. It's not just about a feeling. Love motivates you to move. And so if you love God, you will keep his commandments. If you love God, that love for God will keep you from stealing, robbing, murder, adultery, fornication, all of those things. If you love God, the love of God will motivate you to praise, to worship, to tithe, to fast, to read. The love that you have for God will motivate you to do something. God loves you. It's time for you to love him back and receive the love that he has for you. And you'll show that by keeping his commandments. Number three, how do I receive love? The third thing is, you must be willing to love others. How do I receive love? You must be willing to love others. Two scriptures, 1 John chapter four, verses 20 and 21. And then St. John chapter 15, verse 12. 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. St. John chapter 15, verse 12. 1 John says, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? This commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. St. John says, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. So if you want to receive love, you must be willing to love others. God commands us to love each other. If you expect folks to love you, you've got to be willing to love them back. Again, remember love is an action word. If you love folks, you'll do something about it. Love will motivate you to get a job. Love will motivate you to cut the grass, to wash the dishes, to cook. Love will motivate you to pour into somebody to be affectionate towards someone. That's what love does. And you gotta understand 
that it's the one thing to give love, but it's another thing to receive it when others love you back. Receive their love it means that when they pour into you, you got to receive it. When they teach you, you have to receive it. When they show you acts of kindness and love, you have to receive it. If you truly love others, it will be shown through your actions and your ability to receive their acts of love towards you. Number four. How do I receive love? The fourth thing. Write this one down, highlight it, asterisk by it. You must be willing to receive chastisement and correction. How do I receive love? You must be willing to receive chastisement and correction. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 7. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the, chast the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? You want to receive love, you must be willing to receive chastisement and correction. A parent is not a parent if they're unwilling to chastise and correct their children. And if a child is truly receiving the love from their parents, it means they're receiving the chastisement and the correction that their parents are willing to give. Children understand that it's much easier for your parents to walk away than it is for them to take the time to correct you. Believe me, they got plenty of other things that they could be doing. But they're sacrificing, trying to make you a better person. Why? Because they love you. Receive their love by receiving that chastisement. And God does the same thing for us. We don't want to receive, or we don't like receiving the chastisement of the Lord. But we gotta understand that when he corrects us, he's doing it for a reason. It's because he loves us. When you receive the correction of the, of the Lord, what you are doing is you're receiving the love of God. Fifth and final thing. How do I receive love? Uh-oh. Okay, I told you to underline and put asterisks by the last one. Take the yellow highlighter out for this one. Number five, you must take down your walls and defense mechanisms and learn to trust. Highlight it. Put gold stars next to it. You must learn Excuse me, you must take down your walls and defense mechanisms and learn to trust. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In order to receive love, you've got to take down your walls and your defense mechanisms. 
You see, love puts you in a vulnerable position. It's hard to love because you have to trust somebody. It puts you in a vulnerable position because you're placing your heart in somebody else's hands. We've been hurt so many times in our past that it's hard for us to trust folks in our future. Some folks don't trust God because mother or father let them down. They've been in relationships and they've been hurt. So they build up walls to protect themselves. The next person, the next man, the next woman that tries to come in, and they can't even get close to them because I've been hurt in the past and I refuse to be hurt in the future. Sometimes it prevents us from being and receiving love. So we reject God and we reject others who try to show us love. We use tools like apathy. I don't care. We lose, use tools like anger, indifference, lack of interest. Because we don't want to trust. But God is calling for us to trust him. And trust me, God has already earned our trust. If you're going to receive love, you got to learn to trust God. And you have to learn to trust those who love you. That's really the only way for you to be able to receive love. Perhaps there's someone here today 